Hey guys, we're here at RCBS. We're gonna see how reloading dies are made from start to finish. Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm here in Oroville, California at RCBS. I'm with Steve Coach. Thank you, Steve, for having me. Well, thanks for coming down, <laughs> Gavin. I can't wait to get into this video. We're gonna talk about designing manufacturing reloading dies starting with the design process yes we are so let's uh why don't you show me what you got going okay in here. come on in <laughs> so what we're working on today is 25 by 47 and we have here a chamber reamer print which is where we'll start mm -hmm. and kind of plug the numbers into the d design criteria that get, kicks out the numbers for the die all the tooling that is necessary to produce the dies, then we will model that die, mm -hmm. produce drawings for that die, for the shop floor, and uh, bring them down and get stuff programmed and produced. So the die body obviously is gonna be the most unique thing here because if this this is a 25 by 47, did you say? That, that right there is the six, gonna be converted to the 25, so. Gotcha, so you'll have you'll have an expander ball that's 25 caliber. Correct. And a lot of those parts, the lock nut, the spindle are gonna be common between different dies. But yep. but this chamber geometry obviously is gonna be one of those critical things that you're gonna change for 25 by 47 here. That is unique to each and every die. Gotcha. Okay, so you're gonna make sure everything's good here. You can model it in CAD, create your drawings. Why don't we, head out to the factory and kind of see from the raw materials through the whole process kind of how this breaks down. Sounds good, okay. let's go. Okay, so currently we're in zone four. Mm -hmm. Material will be delivered. This is where we store all of our raw material stuff. Gotcha. You can see the various sizes. We have steel, we have aluminum. And so this steel, some of it is something that's special in terms of the alloy, is it? The, our die steel is a custom blend of steel gotcha. to produce our reloading dies. Gotcha. So raw materials come in and then uh, where do we go from there? We go down to the, to the shop floor. Okay. And so this is a bundle of our die steel. Okay. That's the custom blend steel that we specified decades ago yep. and make all of our reloading dies out of. Very so cool. this material, bar ends are chamfered, it'll be loaded up into the bar feeder here. So each bar goes in and the operations are done and it just keeps it inserting keeps, it, it incrementally? It keeps feeding. Yep. Once that bar is done, spits mm -hmm. out a bar end, next bar will come in. So what all is this machine doing then? It's set up, it's running. 6.5 PRC cedar bodies. Okay. And wow. so it'll produce that die out of the solid bar stock. Engraving yeah. and all, huh? Engraving and all. Wow. So we'll have first op, second op, doing the interior, mm -hmm. all the threading. So this die body is complete, ready for post processes. Awesome. You can see the bar stock there. That's where it's coming out of the bar feeder. We'll do all the exterior work here. It'll transfer over to the second spindle where it'll be doing all the rest of the, the ID work. So we got bar stock coming in here. Got die bodies coming off of here. Yes. Uh, so where do these die parts go from here? Okay, seat dies will go straight to the wash and heat treat. Okay. Sizer dies will get soft polished, wash, heat treat, then hard polish. Okay, so let's so, see some of this stuff per then. Perfect. <laughs> so the dies will be racked up and they'll go through this wash system to mm -hmm. remove any coolant from them. So they'll be washed, rinsed in this tank. This is the dryer to dry the parts, make sure there's no moisture left on gotcha. them. Gotcha. At that point, dies will be racked in these special racks for heat treatment. That's beautiful. <laughs> and then head to our heat treat yep. furnace to be hardened. Gotcha. 
And what do they come in Rockwell and what do they come out Rockwell? They go in Rockwell soft and come out Rockwell real hard, okay. 58 to 62 gotcha. RC, on the C scale. Yep. Go. We put a bead blast finish on all our dies yep. to keep the outside finish consistent. Let's check that out. Okay. So the parts after heat treatment and post polishing if necessary will come over here and we make these fixtures for our bead blast system. Gotcha. And that gives it the nice consistent finish that we're looking for. So he's gonna show us the bead blaster. Cool. What'll happen here after they come out of the bead blaster, they'll get brushed to remove any excess blasting material. Gotcha. After that process, we'll put an RP, a rust preventative on mm -hmm. them. They'll mm -hmm. be boxed up in their appropriate boxes. Gotcha. And then sent up to the assembly bench, which we'll see here in a minute. Can we see some of the other small parts, like the spindles? Yeah. So what we have here is the Swiss area. Mm -hmm. These are all citizens and uh, we make 90% of the components for dies, presses, and all of our other stuff down in here. The Swiss so, machines are particularly fascinating. They are. Bar fed. Yes. And really great for making screws, fasteners, small cylindrical objects. And to watch one work, I know it can be a little bit hard to see through the window while the coolant is blasting, but like the amount of precision you can get out of them. Uh, I don't own one, but like I've read up on these. These things are absolutely amazing machines. They are amazing machines. Yeah. The, the quality that we can get off these machines, whether it be size mm -hmm. or finish, we're getting on these machines. We are able to eliminate other post processes, costly mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm. due to these machines. So for dies, what's the sort of list of parts that's made on these machines then? Okay, so you'll have decap rods, mm -hmm. you have expander balls, okay. you have expanders, seat plugs, any component you'd find inside the die, minus the lock rings, you'll get the guide bushings out here, will gotcha. be made over here. Yeah, let's see these machines then. So what, what we have here is this machine is running 41 caliber expanders. Mm -hmm. So that'll go into a 41 mag die set. Look at that surface and, finish. And just, just the, the beautiful threads that these things can do and the knurling, the engraving, all, all in one machine. All in one machine. Yeah, that yep. surface finish is just amazing. Yeah. Tooling technologies gotten better, machine capability has gotten better, and we've gotten better with it. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the tool room. Ah, After yeah. we design the dies and tooling, we'll bring a print package down here, and the tooling will be programmed, because we need the tooling prior to production of dies. And this is what is one of RCBS's big differentiated capabilities, right? Is the yes, fact that it you is. can grind reamers here to make dies with. You can grind your own drills. You can do all sorts of cool stuff that a lot of we, people have to wait, what, six months for? About six whatever. months at this point in time. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, if you take a look at the table, there's some of our capabilities in this department. And yeah, having this capability is big. If we have a rush on a die set, we can design, have tooling, and in production, and to the shelf, usually within a couple of weeks. That is insane. It's pretty fast. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pretty tough schedule. We can do it. Very cool. Oh, cool. Currently grinding a reamer now. Wow. Looks like a, a 223 size die reamer. Like with these diamond wheels, I assume that's what we were seeing here. That could be diamond, it could be one of the other compounds. Everything oh, wow. in this plant mm -hmm. is overly inspected. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it really is. And I wow. like to drive that point because we make top quality tools mm -hmm. and they need to stay that way. We don't want anything bad going to the customer. What, uh, what is this guy doing here? Looks just like another... 
getting ready to OD a reamer blank. Huh. There's a ground 308 size die reamer. Wow. Not quite finished yet. Mm -hmm. We will pre-drill the body and the neck. And that's running perfectly true because you just correct. You just machine that service. This goes in and, and that just goes in and finishes. Sets it. the geometry. Yes, yeah. it does. Very cool. I presume some of this equipment's been in the fold for a long time, back in the days when now how long has RCBS been doing their own tooling internally? Is it a long time thing? When I started here, we had guys running these mm -hmm. machines, running tooling, but we did tooling in a completely different way then. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, act, we've really evolved with our tooling design and manufacture. Mm -hmm. You know, you could see here, this was a person run machine. This is a lot of grinding capability just right here. We've got one, two, three, Three, four, six machines just right yeah, here. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of grinding going on in here. <laughs> and now that you have all the CNC equipment, what are these machines used for? Some of these machines will be used for, that's got a cutoff wheel on it. We'll do some production work if we need to do some grinding on a production, even on a production basis. So after we go through the processes, of the polishing, the parts will be washed, racked up like we saw, mm -hmm. and then these loads are ready to go into our heat treat furnace. Gotcha. And what kind of temperatures do you get in there? 1500 degrees. Okay. We cook dyes for an hour, then they'll be oil quenched. Oil quenched, right? Yes. Okay. So that drastically reduces the temperature in a controlled way? In a controlled way. And you get your hardness yes. after that quench? Yep. Gotcha. We do. We'll get on a sizing die, five thousandths of penetration of carbon. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Which is pretty good yep. thickness of hardness. So you get your ductility at the core and you get your hardness at the exterior where exactly. all your sliding goes. Oh, wow. Now, <laughs> here's a load getting ready to go in. A little hot. So here's the die load coming out of the furnace. This die load will go over to the wash system, mm -hmm. get washed, and then on its way to bead blast. Very cool. So now we're back up into zone three. Okay. Okay, this is zone three building, and we're gonna go over and see how the dies are assembled and oh, packaged. Oh, cool, nice. So this is die assembly, all the reloading dies, and components from you know the BNEs and the Swiss machines end up here to be assembled mm -hmm. and then packaged, put on racks and sent to shipping. Here's a 30 caliber decap unit, very put together with a headed pin mm -hmm. and an expander ball on the decap rod. So a lot of this is coming off of that Swiss machine, I, I presume. All these three parts came off the Swisses. Gotcha. And so then it'll be assembled with the guide bushing and the mm -hmm. lock ring. So this, here's this. a typical assembly procedure. These are actually carbide sizers. Okay. And they're inserting the decap unit into the dies. Little fixtures for spinning and setting the dies and putting the lock rings on. So at that point, after everything gets assembled and put in its respective bins, mm -hmm. which all these parts will come together off the work orders, mm -hmm. you know, because you'll have, like in the carbide instance, you'll have a carbide sizer, an expander die, and then the seat die. Mm -hmm. Then they'll move down here to Maria, uh -huh. where she's packaging a three die carbide set right now. Very cool. 
So they'll be looked at, make sure the stamp on the die is right, mm -hmm. make sure you have the right dies, the right expander, right seat, seat die, and then they'll be put in the boxes with instructions, a data label, rust tab, mm -hmm. and then once she has them all boxed up, they'll get labeled, put on the cart. Oh, and that one's got a special note. Yep. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so after the dies are packaged, they'll end up here in the shipping department. As you can see, we have rows and rows and rows. <laughs> Another reloading die storage area. Wow. So yeah, lot, lots and lots of reloading dies. This has been really eye-opening and amazing. You know, I've seen how things are made, but never reloading dies from start to finish. Yeah, it's kind of a neat process. It really is. Yeah, and just to see to see everything from the raw materials and to assembly, and then and then this, you know, and it, it now that when I'm using my dies, my RCBS dies, I'll be able to think back to this and and know how the whole thing came to be. How it was it's made. Pretty cool, including the design and the tooling. Just an amazing job you guys have done here. Yeah, it's it's really special what we can do in this facility. It really is. And you've been here since 1978? 1978. That's crazy. Yeah. And you're still loving your job. Still love my job. It's <laughs> you still gotta fun. Love it. <laughs> yeah, it gets me up every morning. Yeah. Well, thank you, Steve. Okay. This Gavin, has been awesome. You. Now, you're going to also want to check out some other videos that we're filming here during this trip. RCBS is back. Uh, really amazing complex. So much that happens, you know, in these facilities, in these big buildings and whatnot. So what I'd like to know is what did you think about this overview of reloading dies from start to finish? You know, did it answer some of the questions that you had? Do you still have some questions? Drop a comment and we'll start that discussion. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching Ultimate Reloader on TV and wanna take advantage of free resources, exclusives and hot deals, just hold your camera phone up to the QR code, tap on the link, fill out the information, boom, you're getting Ultimate Reloader emails. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. Thanks again for watching.